What's up, my name's Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. I'll be showing you how to make your microphone sound more professional in your OBS streams or recordings. Quick note, if you're going to use any filters on your microphone and you only plan on recording, rather add filters afterwards when you're editing the video, that way you have more control over it as filters are quite destructive. As in, you can't undo the effects that they have later on if you don't like how it sounds. For live streams, however, this is the perfect guide for you. I'll be running through the noise gate, noise suppression, and compressor in this video, telling you exactly what all of them do, all of the bells and whistles, and why you should use them if you choose to. I'll simply fire up OBS Studio over here, for which I have tons of guides linked down below if you'd like to learn more about it. And as you can see, I have my microphone audio over here, nice and loud and clear. If you see that you're going into the red at any stage, like I am here, it's a very good idea to add a compressor to simply turn this down whenever you're loud and turn it back up when you're quiet. On top of this, if I'm dead silent, you'll see that my microphone turns all the way down to zero. However, if yours is sticking somewhere around half volume or anything like that, that's background noise and can be very distracting and or annoying for live streams and recordings. For that, you'll be using the noise suppression or the noise gate. These two serve different functions and of course we'll be going through them first. If I click the settings wheel next to whatever audio source I'd like to edit and then choose filters, you'll see a new window on your screen here. This is where we'll be configuring all of the microphone audio effects. I'll also make it a lot smaller so you can see the effect it has on my voice live. Although you won't be hearing the effects live. We'll start by clicking the plus button and choosing the noise suppression. This is where I'd recommend you start. You can name these effects whatever you want and click OK to add them. Later on, you can click the I to turn it off or turn it back on. If you'd like to hear yourself, do a test live stream and listen to the live stream or turn it on, record whatever you want to record, turn it off while you're still recording and listen to the recording afterwards. Just make sure to say what you're doing so that you can understand it later on. What is noise suppression? Well, simply it turns down the sound of noise while you're speaking or while you're not speaking. It affects your microphone all the time. We have two options here, RNN noise, which has high CPU usage and speaks, which has low CPU usage. While the choice is usually whatever sounds better, if you're someone who streams using X264, have a low powered CPU, or of course OBS is taking a ton of power already away from games, eating up your CPU entirely, you may want to try and optimize your settings. I'll have a video for that coming out later on. Check the description down below for more details. Of course, if you'd like to not add to your CPU load, you may want to choose speaks instead of RNN. The RNN noise has no options, but speaks, however, does have an option, the suppression level. The higher that this is, the more aggressive noise removal is applied. This will get rid of more fan noises and constant noises, keyboard clicking, etc, etc, while you're speaking or while you're not speaking. Why do I mention when you're speaking? Well, simply, if this is turned up too high, it'll start cutting into the sound of your voice, making you sound really weird, speaking through a tube and things like that. You won't want to have this too strong. Start on zero, crank it up until you start noticing it, keep talking, and as soon as you start noticing it cutting into your voice, you'll want to take it back two or three steps. It's that simple. However, this isn't the best option for everyone. I, in fact, don't use noise suppression. I use a noise gate. It's similar, but not the same. Noise suppression is active 24 seven. However, a noise gate, which I'll add here, only affects your microphone some of the time. Effectively, a noise gate turns off your microphone entirely when you're not speaking. That's the close threshold. As soon as you start speaking, it'll turn on your microphone once again. That's the open threshold. Effectively, you'll want to stop speaking and look at the bar over here. If you'd like to get rid of keyboard noises as well, start typing on your keyboard now like you would while you're gaming. When you see a certain point, such as say negative 40 decibels, just above that is where you'll want to place your closed threshold. This way, whenever you stop speaking and it's just background fan noises, keyboard typing, etc., it'll turn off. So it'll head all the way down from wherever you're speaking, down, down, down to 40% and then turn off almost immediately. Then when you start speaking, you need to reach a certain volume for your microphone to turn back on. That's the open threshold. Usually you'll want to have these four or five decibels apart, dB. So look over here and crank it all the way till it's almost about the same here. You'll never want to have the open threshold lower than the closed threshold 
otherwise things will usually break. So I'll put it at around negative 35, 34. This way, whenever it reaches negative 39 decibels, it'll simply turn off almost immediately, getting rid of background noise while I'm not speaking. As soon as I start speaking, however, even if it's relatively quietly, it'll have to be above the volume of my keyboard and or fan, which is the close threshold, in order for my microphone to turn back on. Simple enough. However, we have these options down here. What does attack time, hold time, and release time mean? Well, effectively, let's say you stopped speaking. The close threshold has been hit and your microphone has turned off. When you start speaking again, you'll have to reach the open threshold and your microphone will then turn on. But how long does it take for your microphone to go from 0% to 100% volume? That's the attack time over here. You'll want to have this at around 10 milliseconds or even less that way it doesn't get rid of too much of you talking. However, if you have this set to too harsh, you'll suddenly appear out of nowhere and it may sound a bit odd. That's why you may want to have this at a higher number, but don't have it too high, otherwise it'll take away from the start of your word or your sentence. So 10 milliseconds is a good choice. The hold time over here is similar. As soon as you stop speaking, it'll take this amount of time to start turning off your microphone when you stop speaking. So if you're someone like me, where you end words and you slowly fade out or get quieter, this is what'll save it from being chopped off immediately and people not hearing the ends of your words. 200 milliseconds is a good choice here. The release time over here is how long it takes to actually turn down your microphone back to zero when you stop speaking. So I'll also set this to around maybe 10 milliseconds if you'd like it to be really sharp and cut off quickly, or you can leave this at around 150, that way it'll more slowly fade out instead of just chopping off straight away. While these settings may seem confusing, as long as you understand the reasons behind them, you can start playing around with them, tweaking them, and getting things right. At least you only have to set this up once in OBS Studio as it saves your settings and you won't have to worry about it again. So it's a good idea to practice with these and see how you sound with higher or lower attack times and release times or hold times. If you're someone like me with a physical preamp processor, a box that sits in front of me between my microphone and my computer, you'll already have features like these and this wouldn't be too helpful to you. But for now, I'll leave this on. If I click the plus, we have another option here called the compressor. If I add this, you'll see similar sliders here. What do all of these mean? Well, effectively, if you're speaking and you suddenly shout or get really loud, it'll turn your microphone down so you don't deafen all of your viewers. Effectively, the ratio here is how much this effect will be added. You'll want to have this rather low to begin with, otherwise you'll get really loud and it'll suddenly chop all the way down, get really quiet, and it'll be kind of disjointing. Start with this ratio at around 2 and get your other options right first before you return to this. The higher this is, the more compressed your microphone will sound, which can be that studio sound some people are going for, but if this is too high, it could really make you sound weird. The threshold here is the upper limit of you speaking. If we turn this down to say around 34, you'll see that my microphone is getting really quiet down here and it's not getting anywhere close to the yellow or the red. Effectively, while you're talking and getting really loud, you'll want to make sure that you don't enter the red area at all. So for me, I'll place it around here at negative 22. This way I can get super loud and it won't get me into the red at all. That's effectively where you'll want to have this. The attack time is how fast it'll start turning down the volume when you cross this threshold and get super loud. The shorter that this is, usually the better. Leave it at the default of 6, otherwise if you raise this up, you can go above this threshold limit, but it'll take this amount of time to turn you back down to a reasonable volume. The release over here is how quickly it turns off. If you're still being super loud, of course your volume will be lowered. However, if you stop being loud and start talking quietly, you still may be turned down by the software. That would happen if this is too high. You'd want to have this rather low so that when you stop screaming and shouting, your microphone will return back to normal volume relatively quickly. Usually, you'll want the attack time super short at around 6 milliseconds and the release time at around 60. That way, you'll slowly fade back in instead of just appearing at full volume again or taking too long to fade in and people can't hear you speak. The output gain at the bottom here 
is just how much louder your microphone is in the software. If we crank this up, you'll see I'm very easily reaching the top, and if I push it down, we're back down to here. This output gain can be used to give you more of that compressed studio sound. Effectively, if we lower the threshold to be a lot quieter, raise the ratio so it's a lot harsher, and raise this output gain over here to get ourselves back to the original volume we were at, we'd have a super compressed sound. That's the studio sound that some people are after, but of course it can very easily get to being too much. This over here is probably way more than you should have. Again, I have a physical box in front of me that I can use these effects on, and my current compressor is set to around a ratio of 2 and a density of about 2. That's some sort of ratio between the threshold and the output gain over here. Effectively, it's making me sound kind of compressed while not being too compressed. Finally, the sidechain or ducking source over here can be interesting to use, though most people won't use this. If you set this up to be your game audio, for example, then whenever your game gets loud, it'll turn you down. So this is not really where you'd have that effect. What you'd want to do is add this compressor to your game audio or whatever it is, set up these settings to be somewhat similar to what I have here, although you'll have to play around with the threshold and output gain yourself, you'll usually leave the gain at zero, then set the side chaining source to be your microphone. I'll go ahead and test this out with some audio right now. So for now, I'll turn off the compressor on my microphone and simply add it to my desktop audio over here, which I currently have Spotify playing on. Let's turn it up quite a bit. So as you can see, the audio is rather loud. If I click the settings option, head across to filters, and once again, add the compressor. Okay, let's go ahead and select the sidechain slash ducking source as mic aux. Now, whenever I start speaking, you should see that this volume goes down slightly, although not much is happening here. Let's go ahead and lower the threshold quite a bit so that this will almost always be active and raise the ratio. I'll be quiet for a moment. As you can see, my audio is peaking at around 30, but as soon as I start speaking, this goes down quite noticeably. So, what does this mean? Well... Whenever you start speaking, your game audio will be turned down, making you a lot more audible. You don't want to have this too aggressive, otherwise people won't be able to hear the game whenever you're speaking. So I'll raise the threshold a bit so that it will never really get quieter than about, say, 40 decibels, or quieter than negative 30 decibels, etc. And raising the ratio makes it more compressed, turning it down more whenever I speak. The attack, of course, is how long it takes to start. I'll crank this up quite a bit, so you can see whenever I start speaking, it fades down slowly. If I lower the threshold and raise the attack, you'll see that while I'm talking, it slowly quiets down. Raising it all the way up to the maximum, it takes quite a bit of time to lower it down to the lowest volume. If we go ahead and mess with the release over here, you'll see that when it gets quieter, it's currently set to a second, it'll take a full second to fade back in nice and calm like that. Of course, you don't want to have these too harsh, otherwise, of course, it'll sound weird. So with all of that out of the way, you now know how to set up your microphone for a more professional sound, and of course, how to turn your game audio down, Discord audio, etc. while you're speaking. Once again, if you're recording your videos only with OBS and you're not streaming, this isn't something you'll want to do. Rather, apply these effects afterwards in your video editing software, because you can't undo these volume changes and effects such as noise removal, while you're editing the video, while you're editing your video, these are only useful in live circumstances where you're streaming from OBS Studio. So with all of that out of the way, if you enjoyed how I explained things, make sure to subscribe as I've got tons of OBS content planned to come out. A full OBS guide, etc, etc. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!